This was supposed to be the, uh, on the schedule, this was called the What Can You Get Business? Uh, it's not, this is how my family came to Bob. I were told the What Can You Get Business uh, until Sunday. That's the way I intended it to be. It just was that way on the schedule. <laughs> There were about eight Americans who were blessed to see the Divine Beloved. Eight Americans from America who were blessed to see him. After 1962, during the period from 1962 to 1969, only that man got to see him. And of course, they all saw him in the uh, I think, I think all of them at the Arizona. Baba, as we know, during those later years was in very, very intense inner working beyond our, the farthest regions of our imagination. And he had erected a wall of seclusion around himself for the sake of his universal work. Baba loved being with him. And it was a great sacrifice for Baba. And we should always remember this. It was a great sacrifice for him to put himself into seclusion. But it had to be for the salvation of humanity and the universe. Because we are now at the end of a great cycle of cycles. And the avatar had to take a manifestation 100% of human blood and to and sacrifice 100% of himself for the sake of his creation. So, during those years, then, uh, from time to time, people, for, for, for Baba's own reason, people were able to, who were allowed to break through the wall of that seclusion to be with him for a few minutes. Baba was planning to, to give a Western Darshan, a Western Sahabas, in December 1965. And uh, Baba canceled that plan. And when he canceled that plan, my wife and I were there with Baba about three weeks after we had that plan, we were in a private meeting with Bob, and I plan to tell you how that came about. Um, when we were with Baba, Baba said, You are very fortunate that I canceled the Western Sahara's, because you would not have been able to have such an intimate darshan. And it just amazed me that while Baba was holding all of his Western lovers, holding them on the bay, there he was giving me and Phyllis this very, very intimate darshan. And there's no way to comprehend, no way to fathom how Baba can give his love to one in that way. And while holding everyone else at a distance. It's, we simply must say that this is Baba's wish and will. 
But I, I did feel, because Father talked so much about that Western Darshan and how we were with him, he wanted to know how his Western mothers felt about the Western Darshan. He would ask us questions. And my feeling of him was in the meeting there, and since that meeting, that Baba possibly was using us as a substitute for the Western Sahas, for the whole Western Sahas. That Baba was giving Darshan to the West through just two lovers. Any two lovers would come, but Baba picked us. No one is special. If Baba couldn't use us, he would have used someone else. But we were handy at the time. Because of the circumstances which I want about to unfold. So, our meeting with Baba, I could feel the universe that, that Baba was reaching out to, to, the, to his mother's so all the world while we were with him. And I could feel Especially that the Papa was reaching out to the West. And Baba was very concerned with his Western mothers. And if Baba had given the Western Sahabas, he would have gathered about 200, maybe 250 people there in India. But how many more? How many times? 20 to 100 times that many would be. He would be excluded because most of the lovers of Mayabala were just children at that time. So instead of instead of uh, disappointing everyone, he gave instead of disappointing the ones who would not have been able to come to the restaurant to help us. He disappointed everyone. And at the same time, disciplined everyone to be obedient and designed to his will. <coughs> and just picked two people, had them come to him, and showered his darshan on us. Because Baba knew what he was going to do with us in the future. And Baba knew that I would be sitting here today talking to you and telling you this story. Now, I'll go back to the early days. Well, it wasn't to so much earlier, we, we were with Baba on October 4th, 1965, and we heard about Baba in the month of March, 1964. So it was about a year and a half since we heard about him, and we were there with him. Um, but before 1964, Phyllis and I were what you would call, uh, in Western language, seekers. I doubt you call us seekers in the Eastern language. But, um, a seeker in the 1960s was a very strange thing. <laughs> because <laughs> you don't know what you're seeking at all. <laughs> and we were, like, for example, we were connected with a group called the Growing Edge. <laughs> An investigated psychic company. And then we tried to get a little more highbrow. We got associated with the Theosophists. We used to go to the Theosophists farm. And we were into this thing. And we were reading various spiritual books. And we were looking, we, we really were looking for the truth. No matter what we could. And uh, <clears throat> finally, one day, my wife started saying to people, I'm looking for God. 
That was the answer, of course. It was all tied into reincarnation. And I knew about reincarnation, but I didn't pay any attention to reincarnation because it didn't make any sense to me. But all of a sudden, it all fell into place. And I, I just had this feeling in my heart because these are the intellectual decisions. You suddenly decide to hear about this man in India, the Mayor Baba, and you say, well, he's the Christ. That's not a big story. That is Baba reaching me from within, through intuition. Baba reaches us through, through intuition. And then in, later, we back it up with uh, all these rational evaluations that we did. Um, but I was... I just knew that this was the truth, right? It was, it was Baba's grace, and Baba's grace works through intuition. And so, uh, I asked more questions about him, uh, and she told us about the biographic masters and all this, and, and she mentioned it there in Kaluga, and that seemed to be interesting to Phyllis. That seemed to answer all the questions for her. <laughs> but this is the Kaluga, that's what's the matter. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and she figured Mayabam was very great because he's working with this Kaliuga Brahma. And uh, so we were, and, and I was very drawn to Baba, and Phyllis was very happy that I was so happy that I had found this thing, uh, Mayabam. So, <laughs> well, when she left us, it's not here. This is absolutely the most important thing I have ever heard in my life. That Christ is alive on earth right now. And I said, we, we have to go over and see the findings. Uh, maybe we can go over tonight and see them. Then I can ask Tom Riley all, all about their Baba. He just called me about it in India. Um, and she said, well, we can't go tonight because I've invited someone for dinner. But she invited to have invited this girl out. Um, now, we do Otto a little bit, um, and um, Otto was, was associated with the Bibles, so I thought, well, maybe I can ask Otto if he knows anything about their father. So he came for dinner, and I started asking him, do you know, do you know about their papa? He said, oh yes, their papa is the Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, all, uh, um, all evening, this fellow Otto and Phyllis uh, discussed such important things as the I Ching, the tarot cards, <laughs> and all of that. And I sat there thinking, what is the matter with that fellow? He knows about Mayor Baba, and you rather talk about the Yixing and the Tarotars? What, what kind of... I don't understand it. Why, why, isn't he, why doesn't he just want to talk about Mayor Baba? He knows about it. And so all I did, I sit there all night, while Phil is not here, and I, I'm just saying, Mayor Baba, Mayor Baba, Mayor Baba, Mayor Baba. Oh, and so I just kept going over the line. And the next morning he woke up and I said, look, we've got to get over and see the Rhinos right away. It was very foggy. It was very foggy. I remember we and so we got in the car, we drove out through the fog to, to find and my dad never been to their house. And we went to their house to find out from the car. And from that day on, we started to see the Rhinos every single day. It was like getting hooked on them. Yeah, I had to go get that fixed. Then Tom Riley, he would tell me the story. Then you have to remember that there were very few Baba lovers in those days. Tom Riley was ill, and Ivan, they were the only Baba lovers, real Baba lovers, especially ones who met Baba, within, within a radius of 70 miles. It looks not big, but the closest Baba lovers were the Schenectady, the Shaw family, and in, uh, in New York City. So, um, <clears throat> and, uh, those 
was very enthusiastic about the meetings that we would go to. We started having them weekly and meetings right away. And we became the nucleus of the Baba group, four people. And, uh, <clears throat> but Phyllis wasn't as convinced about who the Baba is as I was right away. But, and so about a month went by. I think it was in April of this time. Uh, we had heard about it in March. I don't know just what day. Um, and uh, we had a situation at home where we had a um, baby who she must have been less than less than about two years old, right? no more than two. And Leslie was one of these babies that wakes up in the middle of the night and stays up for two hours every night. And there's nothing you can do about it if you put it back in there so it's sleep. So Phyllis, for, for many, 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 many months, Phyllis had been up with this baby every night. And any mother who has had the experience of having to be up with a baby in the middle of the night really knows what that's about. And sometimes I would be up with the baby, but not very often. Um, and one night, Phyllis is up with the baby. Leslie is sitting there, of course, she gives Leslie a bottle. Leslie is sitting there with a bottle, and the bottle is sticking up in the air. <laughs> and Phyllis is sitting at the dining room table, and she picks up a book, The Everything in the Night. And she just opens the book, and she starts reading a discourse. And this discourse is called Awake Dream State to Real Awake State. And Robin is saying in this, in this discourse that just as you wake up from sleep, you have to wake up from the state that we're in when we're so far awake. And in order to experience this eternal reality, this eternal And there she is in the middle of the night, looking at this discourse, and she says, You mean I'm not awake? I don't, I want to be asleep. I, I either want to be, I either want to be really awake, or I want to be asleep. And at the end of the discourse, Bible says, this takes my grace. So Phyllis comes in to the bedroom and wakes me up and says, Lynn, we have to go to India right away. We have to go immediately. And I said, well, we'll, we'll talk about that in the morning. Really, uh, we can't talk about that right now in the middle of the night. Um, and so, why don't you just go to sleep? And she said, But you don't understand. Mayor Baba can wake you up. And I said, But I don't want to wake up. I just want to sleep. So, she got really mad. And so, and so she didn't so, But there wasn't anything she couldn't do. Really so I we will talk about it in the morning. So um, and the night was finally over and Phyllis was up and putting getting the kids ready for school. And about seven o'clock in the morning she comes in again and she makes the out and she said, Well, did you decide? And she said, No, I didn't see <laughs> So that that made her mad too. And she decided to sleep. She was determined. And so, but when I still hadn't made up my mind, by the end of breakfast, <laughs> she was quickly tired. And she, she took the baby, Leslie, and went out in the car. I don't know where she went. She just, uh, I, I don't even know where she went. And she went off in the car with Leslie. She left Christopher the home with me. He was four and a half years old. And, uh, now, the reason I was slow in making up my mind to, to 
to agree to her because I always knew that as soon as I knew of Mayor Baba, I knew I had to get over there and see him. But I didn't know how or when that was going to happen. And I had to sort of figure it out and I had to find out a little more about Bob and all of this. And so um, the reason that I didn't uh, say yes right away was because the money that we would have to use to go, to buy tickets to go to see Mayor Baba, was money that we had just received from a mortgage that we had taken from our house. And we had taken this mortgage in order to, to build an enlargement to more than double the size of the, our existing studio. And we were going to make uh, a much bigger studio. We were going to have more studio space for films. And, uh, this, I, I couldn't conceive of that, that you, you, you mortgage your house to build a studio and then instead of using the money to build a studio, you go to your agency. Oh, I hadn't gotten that far yet. <laughs> um, and so, while Phyllis was away that morning, uh, I went over to the studio for a while before we took Chris with me. And uh, then we went back to the house. And I'm sitting outside the house on our picnic bench. And uh, I started to talk. I remember it very, very clearly because that was the day that I told Chris about Mary Baba for the first time. And I started telling him all about Baba. And he really was. <laughs> and uh, finally, I said, and I said, uh, so God has come down to the of man. <coughs> that help all, all the people in the world. And so and I said, and then I was standing up on the picnic table by then because I was really happy. <laughs> so, and I was standing up on the picnic table. And here's this tiny little fellow standing down there on the ground. And I'm saying to him, Mayor Baba is the highest of the <laughs> And he was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and he stayed impressed. And I did say that he was a pushover. <laughs> and uh, then I remember that later on, he used to ride, uh, one day he was riding around in the yard on his tricycle, and he would ride his tricycle up, up to the kitchen door. and. Uh, he said into the house to his mother, um, there's nothing to think about but Bob. Oh. Yeah. That's, you see, you see how easily Bob reached the soul at that age. This is true. And yet, there are many things that are hard to think about and all lost so that's what, what is little wonder that Christ said he must be turned to be a child. And we're not here. So <clears throat> just about that time, Phyllis drove up in the car, trying to go up the driveway, and I jumped off the picnic table and ran over to the car and I said, I made up my mind that we have to go with you. To see Mary Baba, who's the highest of the high, there's like nothing else matters. I mean, how could I think that anything else has any importance? But I said there's one condition. She was very happy. There's one condition. We have to write the letters to Mary Baba first. So she agreed. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I said, I'll write the letter. She said, Oh, I'll write the letter. <laughs> So we both wrote letters and wrote them in the same envelope. Uh, um, I, I didn't think very much of her letter, and she didn't think much of mine. <laughs> but Bob and I did both. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so in my letter, you see, see, her letter was all about, about love, service, 
and uh, how how we can to help the community and uh, and and my letter. Well, I spent the first page of my letter just telling Baba who he is. <laughs> and then I said, well, that's not the thing. And then because of this, it is of supreme importance that we come to see you at once. <laughs> and, for that, and therefore, we are planning to come and visit you in July. Um, so in my first letter, I, I, I intuitively understood not to ask God any questions, but I kind of slipped back from that point on. And so our letters went off to Baba, and in about two, three weeks, we went, this was about, this was, this was May, by then. Um, and in June, we got an answer back from Baba by cable. And that cable, we have all the messages from Baba that we have received from Baba, except that one. Um, it was put in the way so carefully that you wouldn't have been able to find it. <laughs> uh, but Baba said in it, your letters make me happy. You can you can come to see me next year in May, but not now. And so, this is June, so we had almost a year to wait. Um, Baba says that we didn't know that for that. And uh, so, we settled in to wait for, 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 for the time when we could go. And then we, we, we soon understood that Baba was going to give a darshan, an east-west darshan, for his lovers in May. So we were, that would be what we would go to. And then, in about the middle of the summer, or maybe it was into the fall, uh, Baba announced that he, would, he was not going to give an east-west darshan, but he was going to just have an Eastern Darshan in May. It was just only going to be an Eastern Darshan. He was going to give a dark a Sahabas for his Western lovers in India in December. Well, then, uh, then I be we began to see a little bit about how Baba works. How uh, Baba is always changing. So that you can't, you get it, you can think you've got everything nailed in place, and then Baba's taking it apart. And so, we didn't know whether we were supposed to still go in May, or whether we were supposed to wait to go in December. And my feeling was, I'd rather go in December with the rest of the others, because I don't, I don't know anything about the East. And I feel, uh, I feel out of place. But on the other hand, you've got to see Baba. If you have to go to the Eastern National to see Baba, that's fine. So I didn't really know what we were going to do, but it was beginning to, things were beginning to change. You could see how Baba changes the picture. And Phyllis was beginning to see that Baba might make any number of changes. He might even, might even drop his body. So, um, Finally, one day we were at a little Baba meeting, and this fellow Otto was there at the meeting. And Otto was all upset because his life was coming all apart. And so Phyllis starts talking to him like a best man <laughs> and saying, why, why don't you, you're, you're crazy, you're, you're a free man, why don't you go to India and see Nehemiah? So it's something. And he was so bad at him. What would they be able to see him at all? And then when she got home that night, this was about in December, in 1964, she thought, why, why, why did I ask, why did it say to him, why would you go to India? Why did I tell him that? 
She said, I should have been telling that to myself. And so when Phyllis got up the next morning, she said, I think we should go to India right away. And she said, look, the we time keeps going by, we never get to India to see Baba. I said, yeah, but Baba told us to come in May. She said, I'm going to India now. <laughs> and, the, and I said, how can you go to India? She said, there's nothing stopping me from going to India now. And I didn't feel that I had the authority to say to Phyllis, not to go. I just didn't want her. And I said, he can't go. I can't go. And I don't know why you're going because he's probably won't see him. He's in seclusion. And you're disobeying the order. He said, I'm not going to disobey the order. I'm just going to see Baba. And I want to find, I have to get near Baba. That's what she said. She said, even if I don't see him, I at least be near. So I said, all right, and uh, she went to India uh, in the last, uh, in the week before Christmas. She was going to be back by Christmas Eve. And I remember that um, Phyllis, I uh, sitting in the living room, and Phyllis and, uh, and Leslie, the one who brought us the bottle, <laughs> um, brought us to the planet of going in there. Um, she's sitting on the floor with her blocks. <coughs> and Phyllis says, Leslie, I'm going to see Baba now. I'll be back soon. And Leslie, who always wanted to go everywhere with them, she sat on the floor. She didn't even look around. And she just said, tell Baba I need him so. And so just now, and then just before um, Phyllis left, uh, Otto got this fellow Otto got coming in the uh, He got word that we, that Phyllis was going to India. He called up Phyllis and she, she said, "I hear you're going to India." And she said, "Yes." He said, "Would you take a message for me?" And she said, "I guess so." And what is it? And he said. Tell Mayor Baba I need his help. And all she said, all right. And so Phyllis left for India. And very interesting thing um, that she, her plan was to leave about 8 o'clock that from, from Kennedy. I, I was up in Woodstock with, with the kids. And um, about a, about a half hour after her plane was scheduled to leave Kennedy um, and had presumably left, had left, um, I, got the tele I got a telephone call from Darwin Shaw. And Darwin is had called to ask us if we'd like to have our names included on the birthday message to Bob. And I, I uh, not the birthday message, the Christmas message. Um, and I said, well, I, I don't think that will be necessary because Phyllis is on her way to India right now to see Bob. And he was so amazed that uh, she was on the way. Um, and we had talked about it a little bit, and I told him, I said, well, I couldn't stop her from going. She wanted to go, she had it in her mind to go, and I had to start off. And so, uh, about 20 minutes later, I telephone rings and it's Darwin Shaw again. He says, well, I've been thinking, when Phyllis gets off the plane in Bombay, she's not going to know where to go or what to do. And so he said, I have some friends in Bombay. If you'd like, I, I could cable them to meet her at the airport. And so I said, that's a wonderful idea. And so he, he cabled up uh, Arnavas and Narada out of Shanji and asked them to meet the plane. And actually it was, it was uh, Narada and Katie. And uh, they sent him a message to 
Phyllis. And Phyllis was so amazed that the Eastern people had sent a message to her through customs to that they were expecting to meet her at, on the other side of customs. And uh, so she came out, they um, they greeted her and they said, We got a message from our Shaw telling us to meet you and where would you like to go? What would you like to do? Would you like to go to a hotel? No, I want to go directly to Ramanaka. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get you there, but you can't, you can't go to Victoria Station. You have to go to Dada Station to catch the train that's already left Victoria. We'll get you there. And they got her to Dada Station just in time to get that train. And she went this and Adi was there at the station to meet Phyllis because Phyllis had sent a cable to Mayor Baba when she reached New York before she got on the plane telling him that she was coming to see him. And so they took Phyllis out the next morning to see Baba, and there were also two, two other Western women there. And uh, it was, Baba just happened to be giving darshan to his, to his brother Adi and his family from London. They had come all the way from London to Baba's darshan on Christmas time. And there, there's Phyllis uh, mixed in there with a, a, into a kind of a family darshan and two other persons from Australia who had come and Baba had him also. So, uh, I won't tell you too much about that darshan because it is was Phyllis's, but there are a few facts that we need to be told. Uh, one is Phyllis had a long interview with Baba alone. She had saw Baba three times that morning in the group and then alone and then in the group with him again. <coughs> Now, Phyllis uh, said that one of the things she said to Baba, Baba, I don't know if I can follow you because, you see, I'm Jewish. And they, they're all talking about you as the Messiah. <coughs> and uh, she said, you, you know, Baba, the Jews are that many Messiahs. <laughs> and well, Baba had an answer for that. Baba said, Phyllis, Baba wants you to know that Baba is God. And all questions about the Messiah just evaporated in that moment for her. And she said to Baba, I always knew that God was silent. And, uh, <coughs> but then, I think it was either in that meeting or in that. In the, I think it was in the private meeting, Bob asked her if there was. Bob um, said, Are there, any, do you have any messages? And she said, Well, I have a message from this fellow, Otto. Well, she had a fish, she didn't say Otto. And the, uh, this, she didn't say this fellow. Um, I think it was a message. He said, to tell you that he needs your help. And Baba got very mad. Baba said, You've had quite enough time this morning. Do you know how many millions of people need my help right now? And he dismissed And she was very upset to him. She didn't realize. But then, then she thought about it. She thought she shouldn't, shouldn't bring other people's messages to Baba. We should, it, so she, she tried to figure it out with her mom and she really could. And um, so then she went back to see Mayor and her mom and the women. And uh, she said, she mentioned to mom, you know, uh, what do you think happened when they left my left home? My daughter, Leslie, said, just as I was leaving the house and my daughter was going to see Baba, she said, tell Baba I knew him so. 
And when he says, well, we must dump on it then. He absolutely <laughs> <laughs> And so, on the third time in that morning, the Bible finally asked, yes. are there any questions? And Phyllis, Phyllis said, well, uh, no, are there any messages? Phyllis says, um, Baba, <laughs> and his daughter, two years old, she sent a message to me. She just said, tell Baba I need to get it solved. Baba was sat by the end of the series. Because, see, that was our, that was our family. Those were the ones who belonged to Baba. Um, there's a great difference between the two statements. It's so subtle, I don't want to go into it here. I don't have time. Um, <clears throat> then Baba, Baba asked of us, what, why didn't, where is Lynn? She said, oh, well, Lynn didn't come. Baba <laughs> said, why didn't you bring him? She said, he has to bring himself. <laughs> <laughs> Then he said, why didn't, why didn't he bring himself? <laughs> <laughs> then she felt, realized that she had been back in the recording, and she didn't know what she was going to say, and she heard herself say, Lynn obeys. <laughs> and then she was really in the trap. And she didn't know what she was going to say. But Phyllis is very, very smart. And very intuitive. And very fast. I'm slow, but she's fast. <laughs> and she said, she didn't know what she was going to say. She said, I do obey, but Baba doesn't. And Baba went <laughs> Because it's true, she was saying, how can I be here? <laughs> you will disobey yourself. I'm here. <laughs> and uh, so Mom says, I am very happy that you have come. <clears throat> and I want Lynn to come. Tell him that I want him to come. Tell him that I will show him in my face if he really is. This I get from very few. And she said, well, Baba, and I, you know, I had talked to us before she left. I said, this is your trip. You know, when it's time for me to go, I'm going to go. You don't have to stay home because you're spending the money to go now. And I'm going to go when I feel like it's too hot. And so she said, oh, and Baba says, no, oh, she says to Baba, I see that I've made a mistake because Lynn won't be able to come here and make all these connections. He, he, he doesn't have enough life. And so, Bob said, um, well, is there any reason why you can't accompany me? And she said, no, Bob, there's no reason why. So, she said, then I want you to accompany him when he comes. And she thought that, and she was thinking of asking him, uh, should I... Um, should I ask him when to come? But then she thought better of it and didn't ask him when to come. She just said, yes, Bob. And so, <clears throat> I'm waiting at home on Christmas Eve. She's supposed to return on Christmas Eve. And, uh, I'm very anxious. And uh, <clears throat> finally, the phone rings, and Stella saw me phone. She said, my plane has landed in Washington because I couldn't land in New York. Um, I won't be able to get home tonight, but <clears throat> I want you to know, I have to tell you just this, these things. Mayor Baba loves you very much. Mayor Baba is God. And he wants you to come to see him. And he said to tell you that he will show you who his face is here. 
Because, uh, what, what a Christmas present. And Phyllis wasn't able to get back home until Christmas Day. She had to take the night train up to New York, and then my sister drove her up from New York City. And uh, so there we were, waiting to, uh, to go to see Bob. And then in in, um, in the early, in the late fall, we began to say, think, well, I guess we're supposed to go to the, the follow up this first one. We're supposed to go to the Darshan, the Darshan of Papa's getting for the East in May. He told us to go there. So I said, well, all right, I'll send Papa a cable and tell him we're making it. So I sent Papa a cable and said, we are prepared. We're planning to and preparing to come to the Eastern Darshan in May as you directed originally. And we got an answer back from Baba by table. Baba said, You and Phyllis come in December, Western Sahara. So there we have another postponement. And uh, <clears throat> so, all right, I was satisfied with that because I didn't really want to go to the, east, to the, to the Eastern Dasha. And so I said, fine, we'll go with it. And the Western, uh, Baba's Western lovers were beginning to buy their tickets. We were going to have, uh, we were making a charter flight. And we were already putting in our money for the charter flight by uh, the summer of that year, 1965. And uh, they, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> now, I think it was either in the late summer or early fall. No, it was in September, that's it. In September, 1965, Baba sends out a circular to his lovers, saying, The strain of my universal work and the time schedule of the universal work make it impossible for me to give Darshan, to give the Sahabas for my, love, for my Western lovers. And therefore I am canceling the Western Sahabas. And as soon as I got that message, I knew that I had been fooling around with Baba. And I said to Phyllis, we're going as soon as possible. Baba, we have, I not only have Baba's invitation to come, but I have his order. So, um, but I said, we won't tell, we won't tell anybody, don't tell anybody we're going. And so I, I had told Phyllis that she was crazy doing what she did, and we had to end up doing what Phyllis had done. I had to end up doing it that day also. You just go. And, but in this case, we had a specific order to come. It was only a matter of the time, which had not been planned. And um, so um, we. We bought tickets to go to see Baba. Uh, we bought tickets to leave New York on the 1st of October, which was the, first, the beginning of the excursion race. And uh, <clears throat> that gave us enough money to go to see, to, to buy two tickets, because we didn't, we couldn't go to the regular tickets, because we didn't have any, uh, enough money left on the regular tickets. And so we're preparing to go, and finally uh, the day comes, and we're, we're, oh, Baba had sent out an announcement, another circular, saying that he wanted all of his Western lovers 
to write him a letter that would be in place of the Sahaba, so it would be to everyone who was allowed to write a letter to Baal. And everyone was expected to write a letter to Baal. Men, women, and children. And uh, I remember Francis Chris wrote his letter, it was a big, it was a big gift of letters, like he had been studying God's speech or something. Well, here's a letter he wrote. And uh, all, all of the children were from the Bible. And uh, <clears throat> Phyllis wrote her letter, and her letter, uh, finally, Adi wrote Phyllis another letter saying, We haven't received your letter. And somehow her letter must have gotten lost. That he possibly the letter that Phyllis wrote was about it anymore. So she wrote another letter. She took a second chance to try writing the letter. And that, that was the one that got the bottom. And I wrote, that at that time I was saying, now how am I going to tell Baba that I am coming to see him without really saying it outwardly? Because I was already, had already figured out that the Baba, you, you have to play the game. If you, if you don't tell Baba directly, he'll play being ignorant, because the, one, one of the hard things that the avatar has to do is to be ignorant. When he knows everything, and yet he has to act as if he knows nothing. And I, I already understood this, uh, that this is the way he does it, that he, that he lives as someone who needs to be told everything. So my letter began like this. Dear Mayor Bob, there was once a man who lived in Persia. <laughs> and the man heard that the that the Messiah was alive on earth and was living in Palestine. And so he decided that he must go to see the Messiah. And so he left Persia, he went down into Palestine in search of the Messiah. And he came to Jerusalem. This is my story. This is my letter. And he came to Jerusalem and he began asking everyone he saw, have you heard of the Messiah? And finally, he met someone who, who he asked, if you heard of the Messiah? And the person told him that the Messiah had just been crucified the day before. Mm -hmm. and, and then I said, I don't want to be that man. <laughs> Baba liked that Baba liked the letter so much that he sent the, man, the letter over to Barak and Zahn from Adri and Mansari to the He said he showed it all around. He was proud of the letter. And uh, <laughs> the, the letter ended with a, with a very strong declaration. It said, it said, if God is in a man, I want to be where the man is. <laughs> so, Baba was, Baba was very happy with my letter. And that was, that was a winner. He, Baba was determined that I was going to get to see him then. And so, the day we flew out, on October 1st, I had written the letter when I already knew we were on the road, but I didn't tell Baba in the letter, I just put it down. And uh, so Baba, uh, we, we sent a cable to Baba, just as Phyllis said, on the day we were leaving, we sent a cable, and I remember the happy word we sat on the bed there, where he came to the bomb, and said, Your call is irresistibly lodged in our hearts. We are on our way. See us. But I didn't know the Baba was so happy. I thought, well, I'm not really taking a chance. And uh, when, we got, when we got there to India, I 
began to worry about this. And I was very confident that we were doing the right thing. All of us, we were getting ready. We went to New York, we got on the plane, we're flying to New York. But then we get off the plane, we get, 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 we we get to Dallas Station, we get on the train, we go to the train, we're looking at the Indian landscape, this is wonderful. And then I begin to think, where are we going? We're going to see God. And uh, the thing is that during this period of time, Baba had gotten blown up out of proportions. Baba had gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that I was going, I wasn't going to see Baba anymore, I was going to see God. And I, be, I began to realize, I'm not ready to see God. <laughs> this is, and then, you see, Baba had amplified that by sending me the message that he would show me his face in the videos. And now, what is that? A great white light? And uh, so, I began to get, I began to get very nervous. And so about the time I got to end, and also I felt we were really intruding on Baba. There we are, just walking right in. And uh, so I remember at the train, and he said, Baba will need to, let's see, well, Baba will see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I'll come and pick you up. And they took us to Sarosha's house, and I stayed there. And, uh, so, I was very intense <coughs> about this uh, meeting Baba because it had grown so out of proportion, it had grown so big. And I was very, very frightened. Uh, all this big confidence that I had manifested at this was was evaporated. And by the time I got to Arizona, I was amazed that I could get out of the car and stand up on my feet. Marriage came up to me and I kept me up on the hand and he said, Oh, well, I'm Marriage. And I had written a letter to Marriage on him. And uh, but there had been a lot of correspondence with Baba in this, these few months. We were very blessed to be in the house. And uh, Baba said, That oh, was a week, you funny. And Bob Eric says, it's time to go in now. And uh, so I'm standing there at the threshold of the Bible's room, and I am just like a zombie by that So I, I just don't know what's going to happen. This, it's like the end. It's the end of the world. And as I stepped out of those sandals, It's as if I left whatever that person was that was so anxious and afraid. That person didn't go into the room. The person that stepped over the threshold. So it's as if I left that person standing there in the sandals and I stepped out of the sandals and into the room. And I was so relieved. That was the first thing I could hear them saying. I can't remember just the words, but she was so full of emotion seeing Baba again. And, uh, and then I went straight to Baba, and uh, well, I couldn't see in the room, I knew right where Baba was. I couldn't the light, uh, the speck dark in the room, and I just knew it was right somewhere. And I uh, couldn't see where Baba was, but I went right straight to Baba, and Baba embraced me, kissed me on both cheeks. Felt my face very close to his, looked into my eyes for a long time. And Baba said, Can you see my face? And I said, mm -hmm. And I felt as if I was letting Baba down, that I couldn't see his face. And I was thinking, he had, I thought he had called me here to see his face. And, and, and so, I said, well, I thought, I was thinking to myself, just in a flash, well, I've done all I can do, this, this is all I can do in this life. I've done the best I can, and it's not enough. And right at that moment, Father said, 
Baba wants you to bow down to his feet. And so I immediately I put my hand down on his feet. Baba very rarely allowed anyone to bow down to his feet. But I must have been, Baba must have brought me to the very the threshold of a tentative surrender. And it seemed as if I hadn't had, had my head on his feet for a very long time. And then finally I lifted my head up a little bit. And then I thought, he didn't tell me to stop. And then I put my head back down again and I said, I'll stay here forever. <laughs> and then Robert took me to my yard and said, I need to sit over here. And he already had those sitting with his left. And, uh, and then we be, and all of a sudden Baba had shrunk himself down from this huge balloon god back down into the sweet beloved Baba that we know. And, and there he was just sitting in his he was just eating. And then Mama had said, I thought that he was, I didn't know he was happy or annoyed that he had come. But the Mandalay is full of pills. Baba is very happy today. And Baba is in a very good mood today because then has come. And I couldn't believe that Baba, who was keeping the whole world away, that the world, well, I say the world, the world of his lovers, which is the important world, Baba was holding in distance. And there we were. No one can understand why these things happen in the way. It's Bob, it's the way Baba works. And uh, Baba said, uh, You did the right thing because I wanted you to come, but if you had written to ask me, I would have had to say no. Isn't that incredible? I finally, <laughs> I had figured out, I had figured out in the mid of time how to, how to, go to function with God, how to, how to carry out God's wish. I had just managed to figure it out and I, I did the right thing. I finally did the right thing. No more letters. Because you see, if you write, Baba and ask him, you're only expressing your doubts. You're only telling him you don't really want to come. Just like I was telling Baba when I sent him that cable and said, we're preparing to come to the, to the, dark, to the Eastern Darshan. Well, I was really telling Baba, I don't know if I should come and I don't know if I want to come. And that was actually the way I felt. And so Baba told me not to come. But when I just told him, I'm on, we're on our way, then Baba was happy. Now, I could, I could go on and on, but I, I feel that if I start into any more of that gosh at this point, I'm going to run over time. I'm um, trying to keep this Sahaba so schedule, where I think we're doing a pretty good job up to now. <laughs> and uh, I will have uh, other moments and opportunities to tell more about the healing of power. In the future. But the, recount, the result of that, the result of that visit was that Baba put us into very fast motion when he was at him. He told us that he wanted us to go directly home. And we had to change our tickets to do that. And it all led to, by just following Baba's instructions, point by point by point, down the line, it led us to directly to come and building our house on Little Beach and living on the main stretches. Um, that's that's another story. That's that's a whole story in itself. How we came to live in the main stretches, and this is the story of how we came to Bob. and how uh, two people, two married people, leave each other. One one when one is leaving, the other is leaving. When the other is leaving, the other is leaving. And there's set this like. Two things, and we can't believe it. If we walk to Baba, we walk to Baba.
Wapen Bersuti Bintang Bintang So, thank you very much. Jai Bhattu.